Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. This is Val from GMLight. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn daytime HDR maps into nighttime using a Hollywood Golden Age trick. So back in the early days in Hollywood, where you know the old movies were created, very often they were shooting movies during daytime and then turn them into nighttime. So here you can see my new Majestic Plaza set available in my desk store right now. It just launched today. And this is a huge set with a ton of, you know, uh, camera views and buildings and whatnot. I'm going to show you that in a moment with a bit more uh, detail, but it's a huge, huge, huge and very detailed set. Nevertheless, how do we turn this into a nighttime setting? Well, the first thing we want to do is go to the environment tab, sub tab of the render settings, right? And choose the map we have here. I'm going to tint it in a different manner. So we get a blue tone. Let's do that. Let's click here and tint it. And I'll select something like a dark, dark blue. All right, click there. Next, we want to tune down the intensity. All right, so let's do this darker. I mean, nighttime is a little bit darker, right? And let's still do this a little bit darker than that. And maybe a little bit more blue with a little bit less color in it. There we go. So that now starts to project like, uh, like a moonlight, if you will, right? And because this is now darker, you want to, of course, add your own lights to it. So, for instance, here we have a, a camera angle of the wagon and a food stand. And what we're going to do is, you know, it's okay to have this kind of bright moonlight. I mean, a very bright night, you would get the moon to actually illuminate quite a lot. And you see this often in modern movies as well, right? So, I'm just going to now add a spotlight shower scene real quick and I'm just gonna throw it in here right where the food stand is so I'm gonna click on my light and position it slightly here and then I'm gonna choose that lights camera view spotlight and I raise it off the ground and just do a basic kind of like a street light down you know thing right just something like that. All right, then I'm gonna adjust that light here. I'm gonna do a warm tint on it. Something like that. And then I'm gonna do normal stuff. And I'm gonna keep this kind of soft. So by increasing the size, we make the light a little bit softer. And then I'm just gonna push the intensity a little bit and then go back to our camera view and see what's going on. All right. And very important when you're adding your own lights is that you have a dome and scene environment mode in the render settings um, in the environment sub tab. If you don't, you will not see the spotlight. If you just have the dome, you will not see the spotlight. All right, so let's increase the intensity a little bit more so we can see what's going on. So we move the light slightly here so it catches our wagon. And as you can see, now we have a nighttime scenario, right? We have the light, kind of like a street light or whatever, coming down here. And then we've got the blue tinted all over the scene. Now, when you start to adding your own lights to the mix, you might want to, you know, increase the blue tone and also fine tune the actual blue tone of it. Often it depends on you know what kind of other lights you have in your scene, but more often than not, you want to have a little bit more towards the cyanish tint rather than the uh, magenta tint, right? So another way of using this is to use it, you know, in a scenario where you have a lot of obstructions in your scene, like if you have uh, pillars or something like that. Let me just lower this a little bit. And we can then use the street light to also produce some neat shadows in the set, right? You can, of course, rotate the dome here and create different type of 
shadowing from the moon. All right. And that is pretty cool. But I think, you know, when you're using daytime HDRs and you want to use nighttime, I think the moon should not be that, you know, intense. It should not cast those intense shadows. It will look kind of funky. For daytime renders, sure, but not for nighttime, right? So in this case, I would just use it more in a subtle fashion and then add, you can also try adding point lights. So in this case, I will be adding a point light. I'm gonna copy this light's color, add custom, and then go back here, copy to the point light. I'm gonna select that from custom, and then I'm gonna move that and place it right in front of some of the pillars. So you can hide light behind the pillars. All right, and then I'm going to raise it from uh, off the ground from the left view here real quick. So as you can see, this is a huge set, right? And just have them a little bit higher up. And because you're hiding them behind the pillars, for instance, like so, you can get away with, you know, not seeing the lights because the lights are kind of visible in that studio, right? So I'm just going to tweak here the light properties, use a sphere, and size, you cannot add too large because that will kind of grow as an object and eventually you, it will, in this case, expand beyond the pillar. So we want to, of course, hide it behind. Then increase the intensity, and we want to increase the intensity somewhat more here. There we go. All right. I remove the spotlight from our scene. Cool. And you can add a bunch bunch of these to you know dress your scene with shadows and all that. So as you can see, for nighttime, it kind of it's beneficial to use the moon slightly more, like a more subtle effect and then we can punch the shadowing all that from street lights all right and of course you can do both you can also have a light here right before uh, in front of the pillars to illuminate them it doesn't need to be just behind right so this behind effect let's say we want to have this little bit more intense and then we clone that light use a new point light and clone that and the clone, we want to move it, and so we can place it behind the camera. All right, so it produces some light here from the top. Again, much like a street light, or in this case, a light in the ceiling of this building, of the structure. So let me just go back to the camera preview, and let's check it out. And so now we are getting an additional light here from the top that fills the image uh, from you know like a ceiling light and then we have that cool effect light here and often when you mix you know lights and all that you want to keep the effect to effects to to a minimum so use just one light with strong shadows and then use all the others more in a more subtle fashion all right guys that's all for today so like i mentioned this set is available right now in my desk store and it's a huge, huge, huge set with a gazillion buildings and tons of camera presets. And, you know, it's a fun set for, for your fantasy renders or historical renders. So, guys, that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching. Have fun with your art. And if you're looking for learning more about Dash Studio, we have a free offer right now below this video. There's a link. That will link towards our photo studio set, complete studio set with props, lights, filter, and 27 minute video tutorial completely for free. So guys, go ahead, check this uh, Majestic Plaza out, and that's all for today, have fun.